One week until the U.S. takes on Paraguay in Cary, North Carolina. And uh, this is U.S. Fan TV, and we're going to talk about that tonight because we have a roster. Indeed. We have players to discuss. I mean, this is more than we've had in quite some time. Uh, we're going to talk about There's that. actual Plus, game. <laughs> uh, we, we're going to take your random questions as I kill the audio that's going in my ear there. Uh, we're going to take your random questions about soccer. Your randos. In life. It doesn't even have to be on topic tonight. Just Any whatever questions. you want. We'll see what we can Pat do. Pat and Chris. We'll see what we can do. What kind of advice we can give you for life. Uh, yeah, we should. I just You just mentioned our names, but I should tell you, to be clear, I am Pat and he is Chris. I am Chris. Chris, I am. There it is. All right. I guess, I guess we should open with the roster. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a pretty good place to begin. Uh, some interesting names. Not all of them are fantastic. I mean, if we start with um, uh, goalkeepers, we have uh, Alex Bono. Bono. I, I think he should go by Bono. Uh, I, can, uh, I can never remember because <laughs> I want to call him Bono. I can never remember. He has a desire which, which one, to save goals. Which one? Uh, yeah. Uh, he still hasn't found the one he's looking for, though. <laughs> um, uh, from TFC, we got Bill Hamid. Uh, Zach Steffen out of Columbus. All in all, uh, to make my comments there, I would rather Hamid had stayed in Denmark and tried to fight for a starting job. So long as he's not locking down a job, I kind of want to see him there. I mean, I, it's sort of like how you feel about um, Pulisic. Uh, you know, maybe not quite the same because we absolutely know Pulisic will be here. Uh, and he, as long as he remains healthy, he will be on this team until he retires. But, um, uh, you know... In both cases, I think it was wiser, or I would consider it wiser, for them to stay with their teams and just focus on getting a starting spot again. I it, Actually, it, not to mention, I would have also liked to have seen Jesse Gonzalez make the list, mostly because I just want to see him get rewarded for uh, choosing the U.S. Yeah, it would be that would have been nice. But, I mean, I, I was excited about Stefan. Um, I don't want to say like overly thrilled, but I'm like, yeah, I'm glad he's there. And yeah, that's about all I have to say about the goalkeepers. I'm yeah. Glad we're moving on and it seems fine. Uh, defenders. Um, we have Cameron Carter Vickers, Eric Lehigh, Matt Miazga, Shaq Moore, Eric Palmer, Brown, Anthony Robinson, Jorge Villafania and Deandre Yedlin. Anthony Robinson. I see. That's what I'm actually kind of excited about because one, um, He's a true left back, and our only other option right now remains Jorge Villafania, who, you know, he's had some good games for the U.S., Fine. but he's also had some, some struggles. Yeah. Uh, he's 28 at this point, so he's going to be old come, you know, next World Cup. Uh, even kind of old, maybe come um, the next real chance at international play in, you know, a year from now. Uh, he'll be 29 and a half or so, something like that. So not like, you know, not into retirement, but at the same time, much closer to the end of his career. I'd like to see somebody young in there, not to mention, uh, I think I said not to mention already, but whatever. Uh, Anthony Robinson being uh, eligible to play for England as well. I'd kind of like to see us make a little headway there. So it, he has uh, represented us at, at youth levels, but it's not like we haven't seen some players decide to jump ship lately. I like us uh, locking down some guys who have the ability to play for either, you know, multiple countries, um, kind of you know, securing a spot with us, um, especially when they're, they're young. I mean, he's 20. Uh, there is the chance that, um, you know, maybe Jack will like this. There is a chance that he could be the long-term replacement for Leighton Baines at Everton. Um, if that really comes to fruition, you have to start thinking England may try to sway his opinion. I, I like any chance we can get right now to um, you know, make those guys feel comfortable in a U.S. uniform. Yeah, be, ha make them happy and excited. And, and considering our failure in, in November to do that, yeah. um, I think now we, we see that we have the opportunity to do that, even if it is a meaningless friendly. Um, I'm excited that um, – I guess excited is not the right word. I find it interesting that we are at the point where professional athletes are now named after Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like children that were born 
during his playing career are now adults playing professional yeah. sports. And you see there's tons of shacks in, in the NCAA too, which is just find it strange and interesting. Um, midfielders. Uh, before uh, we tell one, you one thing I would say oh, though, okay. uh, another thing about defenders, I'm really hoping to see Cameron Carter Vickers and Matt Miazga in the middle. Uh, yes. Maybe a little Eric Palmer Brown in the second half or something, but I really want to see those two out there. Miazga has been playing so well uh, at Vitesse. Uh, Cameron Carter Vickers finally, it seems, you know, is kind of you know, has has a spot locked down. Um, you know, he's had to drop down a little bit to to get it because you know, as we talked about when he was still um, with Tottenham. But I, I like I like the potential there. I like that they're both young. I like that they're both big, uh, strong defenders. I want to see what they can do and maybe start working on a, a partnership there, especially since. Herr Brooks, uh, as much as it seemed he could be the, uh, you know, one of the uh, half the center back pairing of the future, the dude does get injured an awful lot. Yeah. You know, we, need, we need some more, uh, some more players there. So I'd like to see those two working on a partnership that maybe spells something for the future. Yeah, and add DeAndre to that too. Um, yes, yeah. It, you're looking at a very decent back line. Um, yeah, so. yeah. I, I actually was a little. I won't call it disappointed because I like Lehigh. Uh, I just he fits in that window of. Uh, I just don't understand the point of calling out players who are you know, twenty eight or older. Um, well, when they are from Downers Grove, I think it's fine. <laughs> but other than that, um, uh, my feeling is, you know, if you want more depth at right back, we look at Shaq Moore. Uh, maybe you even look at. What what can uh, you know more do on the left, uh, and we start some kind of competition there. But um, it's nice to see we have an actual we have actual left backs on the roster. Even though um, Jorge Villafania also kind of fits into that, uh, he is twenty eight, um, so you know he sort of fits into that uh, my my like group that I have an issue with too. But um, yeah, the big one for me, I like that Lehigh has experience, especially when you look at at this defensive group and. Yedlin, I think, has the most caps anyone anyone on the team, but he's been gone a lot because of injuries and things. So you know he hasn't been around regularly really uh, as much. Um, and then you add to it that you you need some guys, I guess, who have some experience. Uh, you know, when when people were talking about uh, there's the possibility that we could see Josie and Bradley come back this summer. Um, I understand why you you want some guys that have experience that have uh you know a number of years under their belt either playing internationally or at least playing professionally so they're just a little more comfortable whatever but i don't know this is kind of the time to throw guys into the deep end do we necessarily need lehigh there if we already have depth at right back anyway i mean if that's all he was before what's he going to be now so i i i kind of disagree with that call up but i if I you look were at it Mr. as Eric Lehigh he's, for a long time too. I know. And like I, I like I said, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily I don't want to fault him for it. I just see it as he's too old. You know, I mean, come on. For as much as I've loved Michael Bradley for years, I don't particularly want to see him get called up again. Because in the end, you're just too old. You know, we, we don't should, need uh, you in we don't need you in four years. We should point out one that TJ has joined the show. Hello, TJ. He doesn't have his mic on. That's a big surprise. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, TJ is about to have a child, much like Bastian Schweinsteiger just did here in Chicago. That's something you and Basti have in common. Yeah, but this is three for me. This is his, He's only got one. Right. <laughs> and you guys have each got two, so you, you know there's a huge difference. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to three, I can tell you that. Um, going and, three society, wide. and society thanks you. Uh, midfielders, before we do the list of midfielders. I TJ, we're, four we're part of the time. You, yeah, you do. That's true. Uh, before we tell you who the midfielders are, uh, we should tell you that Christian Pulisic is not on the list. Um, he's staying back with Dortmund. Um, everybody had a minor freak out last week uh, when he wasn't in the Europa League match, but it's because he had the flu. He did play Sunday, um, so everything's okay. Uh, but he's not on the on the uh, roster for this match, which is fine. Honestly, it's not like we need to know where he stands with the team. Um, I really wanted to see a midfield that contained uh, Pulisic up top and then uh, McKinney playing behind him, but 
we'll wait to see that, I suppose. But um, but yeah, I'm fine with him not being there. And I do like some of the names that are there. And Chris is going to tell you those names right now. Indeed. We have Tyler Adams, Marky Delgado, Weston McKinney, as you said, Darlington Nagby, Christian Roldan, Kenny Saif. Yes. Trap, and the son of the president of Liberia and the greatest African player of all time, Tim Weah. And one more that's been added, oh, Kakuta true, Mana. True, true. Good call, good call, good call. Yes, I, I, I forgot about um, – yeah, who did, uh, who did uh, Kakuta replace? Um, no one. They just had 22, and then they – they? so I'm like, I wonder who's going to get the Count the numbers, huh? Yeah, they had 22, and then they went to 23, so. Yeah, I, I should have uh, I should have thought of him considering he does play for uh, my Liga Amekis team. So. Play is a – Well <laughs> – Strong word. I think he plays – he's played one time. Technically – Technically, he is a member of the team. <laughs> Maybe they're hoping uh, to restart something there. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he's employed uh, by Pachuca. Yeah. Uh, for people who are commenting, uh, why no Justin Glad? Yeah, I, I suppose uh, that's probably a fair one that I might have taken over uh, like Eric Lehigh. But yeah. um, whatever. We, we can, uh, we, we've moved on to midfielders now. So uh, I, gave, I spoke my piece on Lehigh. I. Glad kind of fits into, um, you know, who I guess would have uh, would have been a decent choice to replace, but whatever. Uh, for the midfield, I really want to see McKenney, uh, Saif, and Wea out there. Yes, those are the guys that I'm interested in as well. Yeah, like yes. one Kenny Saif got such a short run out in the Gold Cup. I mean, what was it like five minutes before he was injured? Uh, you know, he's barely even worn a U.S. uniform to this point. Um, so I really want to see him get a chance, uh, see what he can do. Tim Wea, come on. If the kid's getting time at PSG, he needs to be on the field for us. Yes. Yes. And hey, he's shown some talent. I mean, and not we all need to do everything have been we can. Great. Yeah, we need yeah, to do everything yeah. we can to make him excited about staying here with us. So That's can right. That's right. Aaron Johansson had to withdraw. That's right. That's uh, Kakuta Mana replaced him. I knew it. I knew it was somebody. Yeah, yeah no, we, um, we had twenty two and went to twenty three. They didn't. They didn't have Johansson on the. I think Johansson had to withdraw before he was actually named to the team. Okay, okay, maybe that's why um, twenty two. Then, yeah, I knew he got injured and then um, it didn't happen. But which sucks. I mean, I, it, it's fitting. But let's um, hope uh, Kenny Saif gets more than seven minutes. Well, yeah. The one, the one I want to ask about, I don't understand fully. We'll trap him fine with whatever. He's still, he's still relatively young. But Darlington Nagby. See, I, I like Nagby. I'm a fan, and I still think he might be around in four years. So I think he's he'll definitely sort of, be a key he, part What of, is he, 27, I think? Around he's, there, right, yeah. he's right on the cusp of guys that I would cut off. So I'm, I, I looked at it, too, um, but I kind of feel like at least he still fits in the window where he won't be, like, he won't be in a wheelchair when he's playing uh, if he should you know, play in four years. So I'm yeah, not... But- but we all know Demarcus Against Beasley. It. We all know Demarcus Beasley will be there in four years yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, Demarcus will be there when uh, he literally has to use a wheelchair. That means, you know, with both he and Wea, we have two Liberian Americans on this team. Is true, that right? True. Am I, I'm, they both are right. So that's odd, um, but kind of a cool little coincidence. So yeah, it's I. I there's some guys that. Um, I'm excited to see. And it's it's the first time since the dark days of last October that there is a tiny bit of excitement for me for this team. Um, I'm not expecting a whole lot in this match, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's Let's something. Let's hope to God there's yeah. at least a couple goals because yeah. two yeah. games so far uh, with um, Dave Sarakin in charge, we have one goal to show for it. One goal. All right, Chris, tell us who the forwards are. Forwards, we have Andrea Novakovic, and I hope I'm pronouncing his first name right. Uh, one, uh, I, I'm kind of pulling for him to play because he is born or was born just about 10 miles away from here, where I sit right now. Rubio Rubin and one Bobby Wood. Bobby Wood. And as we said, no Aaron Johansson, who probably would have made it. Yeah, um, especially with the way he's been playing, yeah. Yeah, uh, Bobby Wood, maybe... Uh, sort of like Kakuna Mana, only a lot more extreme of an example of somebody who maybe needs a boost from the national team heading back to uh, club duty. Um, hey, Chris, with um, sorry, I, I got to ask Chris this one. Um, with, yeah. with regards to 
Novakovic. Where the, he's from Muskego, I'm guessing. Is that yep. correct? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck does it say, Muskegon? On the, on the <laughs> oh, US, I didn't, I didn't even notice, did it? <laughs> Muskegon. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so I haven't lost my Wisconsin. It's probably autocorrect or something. They and they just don't know better. <laughs> Mosquitoes. Muskegon. M U S K. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> Back to Bobby Wood. Alex says he knows all about him. Uh, Played for the Magic uh, because yeah, he did. He did play for the Magic. So. So yeah, um, you know it's it's exciting to see that uh, see somebody kind of I don't know with um, local ties to so, so somewhat local ties to uh, uh, members of our show, um, local connections I guess you'd say whatever. Um, so that's cool. Uh, you know, for as much as I fully hope that Tijuana is a kind of a rebirth for Rubio Rabin, like the guy has sort of just had some bad luck along the way. Uh, I don't know that you would say it's as bad as maybe Aaron Johansson's bad luck, but uh, there there are some similarities there. Um, so as much as I'd like to see uh, Tijuana be a rebirth for him, and, and I'd like to see him get chances with the national team, I'm really hoping for um, like a 4-4-2 or something that puts uh, Novakovic and, um, and Bobby Wood up top. And you know maybe Bobby gets either gets some of his spirit back and starts feeling more positive. And so things start kind of spinning the other way for him in Germany. Uh, or maybe it just gets him a look by somebody else who wants to take a shot at him because right now things just aren't going great for him at the club level. They really haven't all season. Um, and yeah, you want to see something uh, kind of start turning his way. So he stays in the picture. Yeah, I don't see him. I don't see Sarakin doing a four four two, but maybe it'd be nice to see. Uh, I, I just, you know, it being a friendly um, with six subs, I'm guessing uh, that uh, we're going to use all those, so we're going to see a lot of these guys, which is nice. Um, you know, Christian points out that the Dutch second league can be deceiving. The Dutch leagues, period, can be deceiving. I mean, yeah, you can you can look like Josie in. Uh, in in the, the Dutch league, tearing it up, and then go to the Premier League and basically not score again for two years. Um, so you know, the, yes, certainly they can be deceiving because they they are so wide open. But you like anytime strikers are scoring, strikers forwards, any anybody who's consistently getting goals at any level, you like it because so much of what those guys do, they're they're a bit like pitchers in baseball. So much of what they do is in their head, and if they don't believe in it, they're not going to do it. That's why, that's why I'm really hoping you know, something works for Bobby Wood here because I, I think a lot of uh, – well, there's even been the comments from the team. I think a lot of what he's been going through is you know, things started not, um, not going well for him, and then he got down on himself, or you start trying too hard to, to, uh, to overcome it or to overcompensate, and then it just seems to get worse – then the coach doesn't want to select you. Then you get even more upset. It, it, it's just a bad spiral and you end up in a bad position because of it. And, you know, hopefully if um, with some, some positive uh, news behind him, maybe things start going the other way. Uh, Sandra wanted to know where he's going to play if Hamburg get relegated, which is a very good question that I don't know the answer to. Yeah. Um, but I would hope that he remains somewhere at, in the first Bundesliga, but I would assume he ends up probably in two, either either to stay with Hamburg or that somebody yeah. else picks him up. And we should. Uh, uh, I just think he hasn't shown enough this season to to stay up. Uh, why no Keaton Parks? I think that's a good question, actually. Yeah. Keaton Parks would have been another one that I'd really like to see. Maybe in his case, it's a bit like I said earlier about Hamid, and like I think we all kind of presume is really happening with Pulisic, where it's better right now to just get your t- your minutes with your team. Like you're not going anywhere. We'll see you at some point. But right now, try to get some minutes and get into the squad and, and uh, find a spot for real. But yeah, hey, if, if you're making the field at Benfica, you know, we'd like to see. Yeah, <laughs> we'd, definitely. I think you'd be able to play a little bit for the U.S. So yeah, I, I definitely wish he was here. But I also kind of look at it as until he's got a consistent spot, maybe it's just better to um, you know, stay with the club and try to earn your minutes. And uh, we should say thank you to Francisco who chipped us a dollar ninety nine in the little uh, chat box things down Woo-hoo! there. You can, if you'd like to support US Fan TV and help us cover the cost of the show, <laughs> give us some money. 
but well, you don't have did, to. Did, but you, if you do, we thank you very much for it. So. Let's see, Francisco, did you have a comment uh, or a question? Because uh, that that's how you get to the top of the list. <laughs> I saw a comment go by. Uh, Christian um, says, um, maybe Bobby Wood goes back to Union. Maybe. That's an awesome club, by the way. They <laughs> built their own stadium. The fans built their own stadium. Where, I mean, that's just, that's, a, that's so cool. The other team in Berlin, Hitler built their stadium. <laughs> just saying. It's kind of a, it's a cool stadium, but it's that that's kind of the bad part about it. Um, so, yeah, uh, what else do you guys want to talk about tonight? We talked about the, the roster. We, we kind of gave you our uh, our thoughts on it. We wanted to, you know, open it up to you guys. I'm not going to be here next week. I'm going to be in Berlin at that stadium that I just referred to. Uh, watching. So we are we are expecting yeah. <laughs> to have a post game show. Now, this will be in my hands. So right. we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm gonna study up. I'm gonna try and do this correctly this time, the first time, uh, so everything works out. But yeah, next Tuesday night, uh, probably eight thirty Central ish, we should be on. Um, hopefully, to have a real post game show. Yeah, I guess technically. Uh, where I'll... did TJ go? Uh, good yeah. question, Christian. <laughs> We're wondering that too. We'll be at. I'll be at the game. Uh, I guess in the afternoon for for you guys, but it'll be nighttime in Berlin, uh, Germany, Brazil. Which, even though Neymar's not playing, I'm still extremely excited about going to that. Um, but yeah, I could. I suppose then stay up into the middle of the night and <laughs> two thirty in the morning. Yeah. I'm not gonna do yeah, that. It'll, only, so, it'll probably only be one thirty. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that. So you can do the show on your own. Just make it happen. For the people. Yeah. the people need you. It's a post-match show. Um, you know, the last time we played Paraguay, we were there. Yes, indeed. John Hare Brooks was, uh, that was the finest defensive performance I've ever seen by an American player. That was um, also one of our finest moments as fans because we, the night before, were in Chicago watching Messi at Soldier Field. And then we drove all night for a good portion of it out to Philadelphia to watch the U S yeah. uh, Paraguay less than 24 hours later. So I'm proud of that. That was a good, that was a good, it was, those were, those were good times. Yeah. Yeah. Who knew that uh, for as positive as that tournament kind of made us all feel that like uh, a year later, we would actually like six months later, even we would already start thinking like what the hell's going on here. Uh, Robert says, will it be strange to go to a place where people love Jurgen Klinsmann? Maybe. Um, he's not going I to still, Tottenham. I still have a, like, I still like Jurgen the man. I think he's an interesting and cool guy. He was an amazing player. Just didn't want him to be our national team coach anymore, but maybe it would have worked out better. Who knows? It couldn't have been worse. So, um, Francisco says he'll be at the game next week. I assume you mean, uh, us Paraguay. That's awesome. Uh, it's only a 10,000 seat seat stadium but I don't see that being an issue for this game. So yeah. it's better than having a bunch of empty, empty seats. Oh, um, I'm not con- I'm not convinced there won't still be a bunch of empty <laughs> seats, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, certainly, you know, I- I'm hoping that uh, uh, the performance exceeds expectations. Um, you know, there are a lot of promising players that we've called up for this, but I don't know. We'll see. You know, the... Um, the previous two games, there were some positives, but I thought even though it ended up 0-0, the, the game uh, with Portugal, I, I, think, I think we all felt a little more positive about it, a little, a little happier, a little less down about the team. Um, the next one, I think we kind of ended up feeling down again. So I'd like to see some hope. – I'm hoping to see – Something positive that uh, you know starts starts us all feeling better about the national team. It starts us looking forward to to games in the future. Um, I saw somebody comment on Dave Sarikin's contract being extended. Yeah, uh, it's, he's been extended through the end of June, so it carries us through the um, through the upcoming friendlies as well. It's fine, I guess. I mean, really. Yeah, I, I yeah, 
I didn't expect. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. You know, it kind of fits with what we wanted anyway, which is don't sign a coach now. I'll wait until after the World Cup. Uh, but I, I, I think more than that, even this is probably a bit of a referendum or uh, a, a bit of a sign as to how the GM search is going. You know, that how how little progress they made there, they they have no choice but to um, to keep kind of the status quo going. Robert, yes, we need to talk about this. Um, have you guys oh, yeah, heard yeah, about yeah, the yeah, USA yeah. being invited to the 2019 Copa America? Yes, that is great news, if true. And then I heard today, and I don't know how credible the source was. It was a Brazilian paper. So um, I don't know. It may be true uh, that the Copa will then move to 2020 to line up with the Euros and that it'll be 10 common ball and 10 CONCACAF teams. Which would basically be, everything we were hoping for. That's amazing. Although I would be even, I, w- I would be happier if it was. I don't. Are there even fifteen combo ball teams? I would be happier no, if it was like fifteen combo ball teams and five. No, I think there. But um, there's only twelve countries in South I, America. I was going to say, right? I think it's only twelve. Yeah. And not like Venezuela is really. They're, they're a baseball nation, if anything. So um, we've seen them play. We have. That's true. Um, that was also a. Trip to the East. It was. That's true. It was Michael Bradley's first game. Yeah, yeah, true. Wore number twenty four, and he had hair. Um. But yeah, so uh, that's, I, I think that you want um. You want your guys playing in in the best games they can. That's one of the things that Jurgen was always right about, and playing in a Copa America every four years and then 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 the gold cup maybe has some significance because yeah it would be played on one of the other shoulder years probably yeah. probably not the same year as the copa i'm guessing you would play it on one of the shoulder years that isn't the the world cup and um if that's every four years and that's something that uh is cool then too. it seems like an actual championship of the conference not a semi every two years or thing, yeah, yeah like you know the um, as we've talked about plenty of times, yeah, our real dream has been that there's some kind of super Copa that combines Commonwealth and CONCACAF. And then, you know, that takes up one of the blocks in there. And then the other, um, then, then, then it moves the Gold Cup to every four years. Because then, yeah, it's not like we hate the Gold Cup. It's just that when you play it every two years, it becomes meaningless. So, you yeah, know, then I guess, well... It makes somewhere in there. You probably also have to fit the what is this League of Nations? What the NATO? <laughs> yes. Whatever. Whatever that uh, new tournament we're gonna have is, unless that somehow replaces the Gold Cup. I don't know. Uh, Diego says uh, Toronto versus uh, Club America. Who you got? It's hard for me to go against Club America. Um, Toronto yeah. is the best MLS team I've ever seen, and they're playing well um, in this tournament. So if anybody was going to do it, they could do it. Um, but you know, Club America hasn't been as good as they, as you would right. expect them to be, probably. But um, there's so much money in that roster. Yeah. If it's... you know, if it's just starting eleven versus starting eleven, you know, okay, I I could see Toronto having a shot. But um, the thing is, over two legs, though. Yeah. Over two legs, I I think that. America's talent will prevail, but yeah. Um, and then the other one, <sighs> Chivas is weird this season, and and the Red Bulls are playing out of their mind. So I maybe you give it to them. I don't know, but um, if I'm picking the winner of this tournament, I'm saying Club America. If not, um, maybe. Oh yeah, I, I meant I meant Toronto Chivas doesn't been playing as well as they could have been. Oh yeah, Club America. I, I mean, I kind of look at it as um, you're looking at two of the best teams from Mexico, uh, even if Chivas hasn't been playing as well as, as they should be, uh, or as you'd expect, um, versus at least the two best teams in MLS probably right now by, by current form, um, or I don't know, like whatever. Uh, it, it, it's interesting. I have trouble believing that the MLS teams will win this, but um, what the hell? these days <laughs> uh and it seems like uh, we should tell you toronto moved their match with um dc united that was going to fall between 
the two matches. So obviously, I, I feel like now more than than we've seen in a long time, the MLS teams are trying. Like they, this is a big deal to them. In the in the past, it was kind of like, oh, we have to go play in this thing too, um, which is not an excuse. The Mexican teams are still been dramatically better, but um, I feel like Toronto is going for it. So we'll see what they can do. Um, but uh, and I we should tell you. It, b- Speaking of Mexico City, speaking of Azteca, Donovan played there maybe a week ago and got booed to all hell, which I thought I loved. I just, I, you guys I, remember. You have, you have to think he kind of ate it up too. Like, yeah. Oh, he that, probably loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, that it, it's like a mark of pride for him because after all he's done to Mexico over the years. Yeah, like that's gonna that's gonna be amazing to walk into a stadium of a hundred thousand people and they all hate you because they know everything you've done to break their hearts for years. Yeah, that is fantastic. Um, we should. I, I love the fact that there's a, a commenter named Mixed Discarude, and I'm gonna believe <laughs> until I'm forced to believe otherwise that it is Mixed Discarude. And yes, you are the number ten man. Just uh, sorry. How many, how many Americans said. do we think? How many Americans do we think will be playing in uh, Champions League next next season? Christian asks. I'm gonna say five. Who do you got? Uh, oh damn it! You're gonna make me name him. Pulisic um, McKinney. Pulisic McKinney. I'm gonna go with Sayef. That maybe he will uh, make it. Um, what? Oh, I didn't think about maybe some of the other guys who have also recently moved to Europe who could have made it through in other leagues. Uh, uh, I got to think who who else Cameron do we have? Carter Vickers, maybe, mm, maybe. I'm not counting on that one. Uh, that I'm thinking they're all going to. I'm thinking almost all of them make the Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> who? I think they will. So uh, I I I was counting all out of Germany. I was uh, trying to think who. Um, you know, Chandler, yeah. do we count him? Uh, we count. We him. can still count him. Yeah. I mean. Like I don't want to see him play for the U.S. anymore, mostly based on age. But um, it's not like he fails to count. Tim you know, Weah, yes. Ooh. I guess that will he actually it, it, will, he, will he actually play is the question. In the I wouldn't I wouldn't have put him in my list, but that that is a good point. That you know maybe like maybe there's a, a um, just a, a tragedy of uh, of injuries to them next season, and he's kind of forced into action right after we're just like oh yeah when, when will we ever get a chance to play with them Marks oh, could. a week later yeah. there he is I mean I don't even know is, is Benfica in a good spot to qualify I don't know what the Portuguese table looks like I'll be honest I'm sure they are but um, I mean they usually are yeah uh, yeah so we, we could see a few which is, is pretty cool um, Neymar leaves PSG probably yeah, yeah. um Yes, yes, Leipzig. We want Tim Weah to play. Is uh, Messi retiring soon? I hope not. Oh, God, I no. I, I he, to, he has yeah. said that this may be his last World Cup, which I don't think is... Like, the, the, way, the way a lot of the stories were, or headlines were kind of taking it was like, oh, my God, this could really... Like, he is 30. It, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he could be done internationally that he's not going to yeah. play at 34 in a World Cup. I, I don't think that's insane to think, especially for a team like Argentina that, for as amazing as he is, at some point, he's just not going to be able to keep up in the same way. And then, come on, they've got guys who don't even get called up who would be the greatest thing you've ever seen for you know 75% of, uh, of the World Cup field. Speaking of us. guys who don't get called up, Sandra asked us today on Twitter to try to pare down the German roster. And I'm looking at the depth chart, and I'm like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody had um, Marco Royce as like third or fourth choice for his position. And I'm like... I mean, his position could be a lot of different positions too, but I'm like, my God, are they good. Like, top yeah. to... They're so... Uh, you could do this with France, like we talked about before the show started, and you could do this with Spain you can do too. It with but Spain, you can, yeah. They're so good that maybe Christian Pulisic might make their twenty-three, and I don't even think he would. And that he would be our only he player. He would absolutely be hard. Yeah, 
like they they're you know they have like Julian Draxler third or fourth choice. He would yeah. be like, yeah. It's amazing the depth they have, and and while they don't have a Messi or a Ronaldo, they do have uh, top to bottom the best. Whoever Yogi Love picks, it'll, they'll be the on paper the best team in the world again. Um, will they win? I don't know. Um, uh, France is very good. Brazil is very good, especially with Neymar. Um, it, you know, Spain, England. You know, Harry Kane's healthy, and I think he will be. Christian can say Argentina aren't a team. That, that's a little bit true. Having said that, even when they've not been a team, Messi has carried them to the finals of multiple tournaments now. Um, I, that dude is just so much better than everyone else. That I, I frankly, I'm I'm hoping. I'm not. I, I'm not necessarily ready to like say I'll, I'll bet on Argentina winning. I won't. Um, but I doubt I will. I mean, maybe I'll throw a five dollar bet in or something. But um, I'm I'm hoping for it. I just I want Messi to have a World Cup. Like, so yeah, Bammer says Belgium too. Yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. God, they're nuts yeah. too. Yeah, it's you know, as a fan of the sport, if you separate the fact that that we're not going to be in it, which I'm now finally getting to the point where I'm able to do. I'm really excited about this world cup because there's, you know, there's so many good teams and good players we're going to get to watch. So assuming they all don't get plutonium poisoning. Um, You're right, Robert. Uh, Germany does have a system. Um, and yeah, they, they've beaten Messi and Argentina. Um, but I don't know. I, Messi, I didn't feel like Messi had like a fantastic final. I felt like they no. were kind of, they were, like all of Argentina, I, I felt like they just didn't try as as hard as they could have. They, you know, there wasn't a lot to it. I didn't feel like either team in, in the last World Cup had a great final, but um, uh, you know, like a few hold that game otherwise, and what a, a moment or two of brilliance from Messi, and suddenly Argentina goes home two nothing. You know, it could have gone easily gone the other way with one lucky break here or there, or just, you know, one, one or two moments of brilliance from a guy who that's what he does. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I still would say, I think Germany are the favorites, but it's not easy to yeah, win, but it's yeah to win uh, a world cups back to back. It's not easy to win multiple world cups with essentially the same team. Um, and Whatever. Argentina feels a weight that 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 yeah. country, the way they treat their players yeah. and and it, it, they they feel a weight that I, I don't think other nations feel quite as much. Maybe England. Um, yeah. But, it, you know, it they just looked off. And, and in that final last time and even then Messi was still standing over the ball in the 119th minute with a chance to send it to a shootout. So, um that was a that was as close as it gets. And you know, I, I feel like I was cheering for Germany. Um, they've always kind of been my second team. Um, but it you know, I want Messi to I wanted Messi to get one too, and I still do, so I, I I'm torn on what uh on that, I guess. I'll, I guess I'll be cheering for Germany again and I'll be cheering for Messi and if they meet um but notice what I'm saying too, I'm cheering for a team and I'm cheering for a player. And, you know, as good as Messi is, it never works out that a player can carry a, yeah. a team unless it's Diego Maradona. So, um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a good time to be a fan. It's maybe not a good time to be a fan of the U.S., but it's definitely a good time to be a fan of the sport. So, uh, you know what? I'm, I wish TJ were here because... Um, he got called he had, up for military things. He did, yeah. But he had a amazing story from over the weekend. He's a ref. Oh, and yeah. He's refing a men's league game. And on one of the teams was Mike McGee and Brian McBride. And they lost. <laughs> I wanted and not him because to, those two were hurt. <laughs> I wanted I wanted him to elaborate on on that. But just just because, you know, he got into an argument. You know, TJ, he would have he started an argument with one of those guys. <laughs> Just to, you know, you're wrong about this. because he could. Just yeah. point at a technicality or something. Just because he had to show them that uh, that he could. And I have a story, too. I, uh, as you know, Chris, I 
went to Chicago with my son to a Bayern watch party because Bayern brought in Bernie, their mascot, and then uh, the three big trophies. They brought in their 2013 Champions League trophy and then a uh, Bundesliga shield and a Pokal Cup. Um, all there for us to take photos with. And it was a really cool kind of low key fun event. Um, they gave us. I should have put those up on uh, uh, US Fan I put TV's, them up on my uh, personal for those uh, who, who follow me. Instagram. On, yeah, I should have. I, I put them up on my uh, personal Instagram and Twitter, but um, I didn't put them on the US Fan TV ones. But yeah, it was, to me, it was a, that's a team that really understands that they need to cultivate their relationship with fans. Unlike, both our favorite club team, Arsenal, who charged me $12, yeah. 12, 12 pounds for a photo with the FA Cup. And um, on top of a tour I had already paid for and the U.S., which, you know, charges $130 for tickets to a meaningless friendly. Um, Bayern gets it. And uh, this was a I mean, the fact that they brought that stuff here, that's that's awesome. So, um, yeah, props to them. Very cool uh, club. And, yeah, uh, uh, TJ also, I think it was on Twitter, sent out pictures that he found of um, World Cup tickets. from. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's his dad's tickets that I went to uh, the game in Chicago that I attended uh, in the 94 World Cup. I mean, I remember I remember all of us talking. I probably went with TJ. I, don't, <laughs> I should probably confirm that with him. I can't even remember anymore. I only remember that uh, he called me up. I... It was, I think it was during the U.S. game, the, the uh, opener in Detroit uh, versus Switzerland. And I can't remember if he told me during the game or after the game that, oh, yeah, he had tickets, but he didn't know how to get to the game. What? Yeah, because he was like, well, he was 17. At, I, no, he was, he was probably 18. I was probably 17 at the time. Um, he was like, yeah, I didn't really, you know, I didn't have a way to like, get to the game. My mom was like, I would have gone with you guys, got in a hotel or whatever, and let you go to the game. It's like, why didn't you say anything? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> he didn't tell me until after. Uh, either I can't remember if it was during the game or if it was after the game when he told me that. That yeah, we could have gone to it. We had tickets. We just, I didn't know. Uh, Robert asked if uh, we've been watching uh, the NCAA tournament. Uh, Pat, did you know about Loyola, Loyola University last month? I did. I've been I've been to yeah uh, I have a, two of their games I, I have before. a bunch of friends who have gone there and I I one of my old coworkers had a, a season ticket up until he moved away um it was like eighty bucks for the year or something yeah, like that oh, and there the, was nobody at their game it's it, there there there's there's nobody there and it's tiny I mean like it's it's small even for probably a high school gym um I've been there I think I've been to two games of theirs twice because. Uh, they play against the University of Evansville and the mighty MVC these days. Um, and uh, my alma mater, the U of E, uh, I go down every once in a while to watch their games uh, since it's an easy one to get to. Um, I've been to, yeah, at least two games of theirs, I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's like it's tiny. Their, their stadium's tiny. And I never would have assumed that they would have not only made the tournament, like, would fare fairly well. <laughs> Ooh, Francisco, this is a good question. I like questions. I like hypotheticals like this too. Would you give back Polisic as if he never existed in order for the USA to be in the 2018 World Cup? No. Uh, today, no. Um, if you, I mean, the, the this is where the hypothetical burns is if he never existed, you don't know that you lost him. So then you can give it up, and you, as far as you know, you haven't given anything up. Uh, so no, I, I, as it stands now, no, not to have like an actual superstar, like the first real kind of star out of the U.S. Uh, no, I won't give that up just to not to just just to qualify qualify for the World Cup, especially with a team that we were like, yeah, I, it's missing a lot of pieces. Here's what I keep telling myself too what would we have played three or four games this summer? And then we would have been done. And I would have loved those three or four games, but, yeah. um, and it probably would have been three considering how bad we were in qualifying. If we had eked, you know, if the Panama goal didn't count, 
we would have been in, or at least in the playoff, and maybe we go through and then... I the don't non-goal see goal had not yeah, counted. Exactly. And I, I don't... I mean, we would have played three games and we would have been done. Um, so I keep telling myself that as if in... It's not that big of a deal then. And then, you know, Polisic's a guy who has enormous potential and and can be a star player for us for a long time. And maybe actually in 2022 in, in Qatar or 2026 in Morocco, uh, he can help us do something. So, um, no, I wouldn't give him back. Should we address speaking of Morocco? Like like a lot of people, uh, I'll, I'll, I, know where, I think I know where you're going and I'll be there in a second. Like a lot of people are saying, uh, I'd trade him for winning a World Cup, sure. Yeah, I would too. But no, just to make it, nah. Um, some people from I'm guessing Morocco, but maybe not. <laughs> Judging uh, about what they're saying, and we've uh, now and, pissed uh, off Morocco. Yeah. Um, we got Wales, we got Morocco, we got France uh, for a while there. Yeah. yeah, Mexico, but that's what we expect. Um, but yeah, uh, they were mad that they said we were being arrogant in the last show when we were talking about. They said Morocco doesn't need to bribe FIFA to get into the World Cup. Yes, they kind of do because everyone does. It's not your fault, Morocco. It's FIFA. And then the one guy's like, it's not all about stadiums and money. Tell that to FIFA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, but, yeah, like that. that's my problem with it. Um, you know, we're not saying that like Morocco has to bribe people to get in. We're saying that, yeah, FIFA's like baseline yeah. is you have to bribe us to get this. Even if I think the U.S. had been the only choice, like if, if our bid had been the only one, we still would have had to, to, to pay some bribes. Uh, we're just saying that like Morocco has a greater opportunity because of the way that um, FIFA kind of facilitates bribes, you know, that, that they need to build all this infrastructure, that they need to build these, right. um, yeah. these, these stadiums and things. Those are great opportunities for FIFA to go, see, we want to give you all this money that will go to build these things. And amazingly, 10% of it makes the actual goal and the other 90% finds its way into somebody's pocket. Uh, so we're just saying that statistically and realistically, Morocco is far more corrupt than the United States. And so there's just vastly more opportunities for FIFA to take this money and or, or to put themselves in a position where they can somehow get kickbacks. And then, you know, Morocco needs to do a lot of things that FIFA would presumably help them with that also somehow result in kickback. Yeah, kickback. I mean, to say that we have stadiums and they don't is not being arrogant. It just is. And we could host a World Cup in California or Texas yes. and have enough stadiums to do it. It would be, you know, it. It just is. We don't need to build anything. And they said, you know, over the weekend that they need to build $15 billion worth of stadiums and infrastructure to host the World Cup, which I think their GDP was somewhere around $100 billion. That seems like a dangerous plan, but that's for them to decide, not me. So if you want to do that in your country, go ahead. But um, yeah, I mean, they're claiming that like it's only $3 billion would have to go to build stadiums, another three to build. Uh, I think it was like infrastructure to support it. There's like, I don't know, nine or something, what, whatever it is that they want to go to building like hospitals and other things. Oh, oh, another three for, ho for hotels. That's it. So like three for hotels, three for stadiums, the rest to like roads, uh, high speed trains, uh, hospitals to, to have the healthcare in place. I get it. And the infrastructure itself is probably a good thing that the country invests in. But yeah, you're still looking at a country that needs to build all these stadiums. And I, I know their plan is to have them like many of them. So they can like be, they're going to be modular. So they can be taken down. So they don't have to remain 50,000 seat stadiums forever. But it still just seems like it's an awful lot of things that have to be done to make this, um, possible and that's an awful lot of opportunities for fifa to find a way to get a kickback yeah they like places everybody's got their build. hand out when it comes to fifa but you know what and so yeah yeah i mean we still hold the ticket sales record for a much smaller yeah. world cup and 1994 was still a record and if we host it in 2026 yeah, i mean we'll, there, we'll there are things no. like um you know fifa needs uh gianni not yet indicted infantino uh has promised all these, like all these organizations, all the, all these FAs within uh, all these member FAs 
lots more money than they were getting before. It's supposed to be part of his like, look, everything's out on the table. We're going to give you more money. Well, how, how are they affording that? Because FIBA hasn't made as much money lately as they have in the past. Their last two World Cups weren't super sellers. You know, I mean, it took 2006 to finally beat 94, to finally make more money than 94 made. 2010 and uh, 2014, I, don't, I, I, I can't remember the numbers offhand, but I don't believe they surpassed Germany. I think Germany's now the, the current record holder still. Um, they need they need viewership and they need attendance and they need concession sales and all that, all the stuff that makes them the, the real money. And on top of it, since the scandal broke, they've not had one sponsor outside of like Russia, Qatar, and China. They need U.S. sponsorship again. So there are, I guess you could call it, uh, it's not necessarily bribe, but like financial incentives uh, strong, yeah. strong uh, financial incentives that would lead FIFA to, no matter what they say, kind of about the U.S. or you know, our bid, um, to choose us simply because they need the money more than anything. You, and you in can't the end, give up all the on the, the end, books money. Like, yeah. You have to have some yeah. of the on the books money. It's it's so. Uh, in the end, they are a money making venture, whether they claim to be or not, and you know they need it. So. I don't think the U.S. bid is dead in the water. I am not confident it's going to survive. Uh, you know, I, I, I could see them making, you know, the, the other part of um, kind of the hands-out policy at FIFA, they all want to have, like, they all want to seem like they're the good guy even as they're robbing you blind. So I could see them wanting to send it to Morocco as sort of a, see, we went to another country that, that has wanted this for so long and has never had a chance and the the African continent's only had you know, one it, previous If you're going to do that, Cup. though, and you're going to, by their bouncing around continents thing, then North America would definitely be due the yeah. next time around. And I know they want to do a 100th year World Cup in, in Argentina and Uruguay um, was the, the talk for the want for the 2030, which would be cool. So, um, but who knows what they're going to do? I have no guess what they're going to do anymore. Um, Edgar says, uh, he does think the North American bid will win out, but that'll kind of ruin the U S and Mexico qualifying matches. Yeah. If we do end up getting it and definitely could, um, that takes that fun away. I, I think it's a good trade. I would take having the world cup here yeah. in exchange for, um, giving up the, the, those matches, but you know, those matches are one of my favorite things in sports. So, um, uh, is Morris, Morris done? Yeah. I'm not willing to say he's done. I mean, you know, he's not, um, he's not, it's not like he's, uh, his career is over by any means. Has he plateaued? Yeah. I, I think that's probably fair to say. Um, you know, a little of that I think has been injuries. A little bit of that may be his decisions to, you know, skip going to Germany uh, because of what a dog a dog or a cat? There's a, a dog. dog, right? Um, there's a dog, um, and some of it is that he only has one foot, and that works if you're messy. But you know, if you're not, you gotta you gotta do something. And I don't think he's progressed in uh, in kind of his two foot play to um, to truly stand out. So. You know, he still has speed on his side. Until that's gone, he, he definitely has a spot. But um, is he continuing to progress? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know about that. Uh, Jules, thoughts on VAR being used this summer? To me, I was a big supporter of it until I actually saw it implemented. And now I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, um, and, I, I and wish how they they're weren't. still getting things wrong, I don't know. Yeah, but, um, it hasn't helped. Yeah. I like stuff like goal line technology. Yes, yes, for that, sure. That, I think, is awesome. Because I do remember um, uh, England's goal was at 2006 or 2010, where um, uh, um, Frank, uh, what's his name, uh, like hit the ball off. Like it, it smashed so hard into the back of the net that it bounced back out, and the referee missed it, and they never called a goal. It was a clear goal. Like It didn't just cross the line. It crossed all the way through the back of the net and came, out, came back out because he hit it so hard. Um, you know, stuff like that, that, that would simply be registered a goal. I, I, that, that's positive to me. I would be fine if there was some kind of technology on all the, um, like 
all four uh, sides of the field so that you know you knew as soon as the ball went out of bounds too. That I would be fine with. Like you let the flags light up or something on on the, the side of the field in which the ball went out. I'd be cool with that. Um, but yeah, other things with VAR. I I would rather I guess I guess I'm I'm in favor of the idea. I would rather in some instances they didn't necessarily like stop the game to check stuff, but maybe there was somebody in the booth going, yeah, that was a dive, and then that player gets a card or something after the fact. You know, even if even if they won the call, you know, two minutes later or whatever, the referee the next stop and play still walks over and goes, yeah, you just got a card that was a dive. Leipzig says Mike Dean for World Cup final. I oh, think God. England is there. Uh, England would only want to start Harry Kane and Delhi Ali. <laughs> Theo, or I guess Theo's gone. Uh, any Arsenal related player. Um, yeah, uh, Harry Kane and Delhi Ali. He would be like high fiving them for yeah. their dives, and then like, <laughs> like kicking the ball in the net for them. Um, good call, Robert. Uh, yeah, shout out to Arsenal ladies and uh, Heather O'Reilly and winning. The, yes. winning the women's super league cup i love that she plays there yeah this makes me happy i wish she still played for the u.s but um, i'm a i'm a big Hayo fan i would say she's my favorite uh for, uh current or former uh u.s women's player she's definitely up there um people are asking about Bradley and Josie, if they're going to yeah, be we'll, back, it's not going to be for a while. Back. And it's going to be if we need them for some reason. So, I mean, I don't think either one of them are. And I, I do wonder, too, why those two specifically get so much of the hate for us not qualifying when you don't really see it given to Deuce or yeah. Kellen Acosta or anybody you know, else. A, a number field, of other yeah. guys. It, it, it's those two that, that, seem to get most of the blame. And I'm not saying they don't deserve some blame, but um, it is a team game and nobody really like Pulisic looked like he was trying in that game. Yeah. Everybody else pretty much looked like they were just ready to go home. Um, so yeah, there, there, uh, there's a lot of blame I think to go around. I don't think it's fair that the two of them get it. Um, uh, there's no do, point in playing them in a friendly, but if we need them in a gold cup or in a qualifier and they're playing well, and maybe we need some depth at a position or something. Yeah, sure. I'm okay with them more as like locker room guys at this point. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that. they can never be called up again. Um, I just don't want to see them. I, I don't want to see us building a team around them anymore. Like Josie's, I think 28, like he's right on the cusp of like, yeah, he could in theory be playing, but I'd like to think that in four years, will have better players than he will be at 32 um, to kind of play in that, in that position or, you know, in that role, or maybe we'll have a new, uh, we won't have a need for that same hold up position. I, I don't know, but um, I'd like to think that we'll have better options to come uh, 2022. So we'll see. Um, but whatever, I, 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 if they get called up, I'm not, I'm not totally against it. I'm not, I'm just not in favor of it. I guess the one that I really don't want to see happen is I don't want to see Deuce get called up just so he can set the goal scoring record. Yeah, he doesn't deserve it at this like point. Like that one, that one, I kind of feel like you're 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 only giving him that to to try and set the record. And sorry, man, you should have done it when you had the chance. Like now, you're too old, and we we can't use you in four years. There's just no point in having you around. The only reason to call you up now is to give you a chance to set the record. And I don't, to me, that's not worthy of a spot. Poon Slayer blames Zussi the most, he says. <laughs> and why wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, that's a fair one. Um, I think we've covered it at this point. We've been going on for an hour. That's not wow. bad. For no, I have no notes other than the roster. Um, all right, this is US Fan TV. We have a website that's usfantv.com, and we have Twitter, which we use a lot. We have Facebook, which I basically just post the videos of the show to. Um, but you should still like us there. And we have Instagram, which as Chris pointed out earlier in the evening, we probably need to do more with. Um, we hate Snapchat. We do have YouTube, but you probably figured that out because you're watching a video on YouTube right now. So thank you. Subscribe uh, if you haven't already and tell your friends to do the same. 
uh, helps grow the channel. The channel should be a lot bigger right now, but the U.S. national team kind of screwed us over on that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I will not be here next week. I will be in Germany. Chris and TJ will be, and maybe not TJ because he's about to have a child. Maybe it's just going to be you, Chris. Maybe you are going to be hosting the show alone. Yeah, that, um, we'll see how that goes. Next Tuesday night after the U.S.-Paraguay match, and I don't know what time the match is, so I don't, but it's on the East Coast, so it's not going to be it's too late. It's 6.30 Central, I believe. Oh, so, it works um, out nicely. Yeah, or, yeah it's, it's almost showtime anyway by the time there, it's on, there you so, go. So, uh, we should be okay. Uh, could we see one? Well, I'll take one last question. I can say, could we see Bradley as coach again? I assume you mean Bradley senior. Uh, no, I don't see him coming back. Uh, I think there'd be enough. Um, <laughs> I, I think there's enough hate on U S soccer right now for like bringing back Bruce and having it go the way it did. I don't think we'll see Bob Bradley return. Could no. we see Michael Bradley someday? Uh, maybe. Maybe down the road. I, yeah. I won't. I won't write that one completely off. But I don't know. That, that dude has to like get licenses and show he can coach at things first. So, um, whatever. Do you have any final words? On that note, thank you, everyone. You're done. All right. Uh, we'll see you. This channel will see you next week. I'll see you in two weeks. Auf Wiedersehen. You're done. <laughs>